Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with Mina Shum, and what a delight uh, to have her on again. I think for the third time, actually, she's the only guest that I've actually had on Face to Face for three different interviews. We spoke about her film, Ninth Floor, uh, a couple of years ago, actually, and now we're back to talk about her new film starring Sandra Oh and Don McKellar, uh, Meditation Park. It's a delightful film. It's charming. It's about identity and voice. It's about how, how most of us are always coming of age, it seems to me. And Mina is just such a delight to chat to. And I actually think she should be teaching a course in sociology or philosophy and, and maybe, maybe leave this filmmaking thing behind. But we talk about the falsity of, of capitalism and, and our neighbors and the triumphs and obstacles that we face and, and about the journey uh, that we're all on. Buddhism and, and existentialism make their way into this conversation as well. And what a, what a, what a delight. The noise as Mina says, the noise of raising a family. How interesting is that? You're going to find out more about it. I hope you get to see the film soon. Meditation Park is the name. Uh, and coming right up, an interview with Mina about the film and about a whole lot of other things. DavidPeckLive.com for more information about my speaking and writing. And of course, focusing on the film festival right now, currently uh, at face2facelive.ca for uh, over 30 interviews, I believe it or not, over the next little while. And don't forget rabble.ca too for a whole lot of other writing and, and, and podcasting and blogging around uh, issues that matter. Coming right at Minisham and her new film, Meditation Park. Welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by a, uh, a returning very special <laughs> guest here at the Toronto International Film Festival. Mina Shum is here today to talk about Meditation Park. I can't believe we're sitting together again maybe... Two 18, years. Two, is it two years? Yeah. How crazy is that? I think the last time we, we spoke was at the National Film Board, which yes. has relocated even. So that's right. Yes, just the that's world right. is changing around us. <laughs> Constantly. So Meditation Park. So where is Meditation Park? It's uh, it's actually a park in East Vancouver. Okay. Uh, Hastings Sunrise area. It's actually a tiny little park. Yeah. It's right on the water. There is a meditation park, but there's the the park that we use in the film is um, a different one. Okay. Uh, but yeah. it's still in the neighborhood. It's just that other park was so sh it, there was visually nothing. Oh. Okay. But yeah. I loved the fact that in my neighborhood we had a meditation park. Yeah, no, it's, it's lovely. Um, but it's like it doesn't isn't just the place. It's also the, a metaphor. I mean, of we're, I think we're all in meditation right. park. Yeah. Is that where the now uh, what will be referred to later as the infamous uh, earphone dance scene? <laughs> um, is, that where, is, is that where that happens? No, that actually takes place at New Brighton Park, okay. which is also in the neighborhood. Okay, like I nice. pretty well shot the movie that's, in my hood. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it yeah. was real. Actually, it was really so cool that I could walk home for lunch to my house. Something, something really uh, relational and intimate about that. Which is, by the way, congratulations on a delightful, charming, wonderful film. Thank you. Yeah, it's such. Well, it's a great. What I love is it's a great film, but it's a great story. Right. Thank you. And and they're not always the same thing. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, so 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 we're so so your comment. We're all in meditation park. Yeah. The, the relationships we have, the conversations we yeah. have, the, the places we work. Is that kind of the obstacles we face, right. the triumphs we face? I think we are, we are all we. It's so it's so funny. So I moved into that neighborhood and I saw men and women of different ages and cultures selling parking and competing with each other. And immediately I want, I was like, this is a metaphor because here this is sort of like homegrown capitalism sure, at work. Sure, sure. And at the same time, they're taking turns. Mm. They're living, they, these are, you're competing with your neighbors <laughs> for parking. Right, so right. you're not going to out, like you're not going to outrun someone and th and throw them out of business. You want to make sure they're still okay. Sure, sure. Right? they're making a little. They're making a little. Yeah. They're making their share of. We're That's all right. making our yeah. share. Yep. Yeah. And and I it just dawned on me. It was like what a beautiful metaphor for a, a new societal model, in which we, and you see our society. You see humanity moving towards it. We're resisting, but 
Now we realize we have limited resources. Mm. Now we realize mm. we don't have any control. Nice. All yeah. we have is our neighbors, right? Yeah. So why aren't we including each other? Why are we excluding each other? What a great line. That could have been that could have been the log line. All we have is our neighbors. <laughs> All we have is our neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it doesn't it just that you know, now we know scientifically that we're all connected, right? We know that on a cellular level, uh, the dinosaur, the rocks that were, the dinosaur bones are somewhere in our DNA. Mm. That everything that's ever been made on this earth somehow is inhabiting in our body. Well, that means we are all connected. Mm. Mm. Um, I don't understand in a in a world of po where where fear. I think it's like the capitalist system a little bit, the falsity of capitalism, which is like, you know, if you have more, you will somehow be yeah. immortal. Sure. Yeah. Um, because. We, 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 are, we act out of fear when that is not, I don't think that's right. our nature. Right, right. Like in, in a, if we were um, cave people, you, you see another cave person, there, there, there may be enemy attacks, or there may be, what do you got? You got some coconuts? I got some rice? Okay, <laughs> right. let's make dinner, right? Right, sure. That was how society, for, uh, that's how civilization began in terms of us, uh, different, tr different people, like it, in the, um, Neanderthal times, there was different species of humans. There was Homo sapiens, there was the Neanderthal. They were all living together in some kind of harmony or some sort of um, uh, mutual respect, I guess, right? So I see that and I go, well, that times capitalism equals we're all trying to get a bit of our own now right. suddenly, which is draining well, the resources it, of our world, which is creating yeah. a lot of fear in everybody. I don't, and it's not necessary. Every man and woman for themselves, in yeah. a sense. There's no such thing as a free lunch. That's right. That's right. And I just, I, I find, I, is I that did. Don, is that Don McKellar in the film? By the way, yes. what a delight to see Don McKellar and Sandra Oh. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Last Night. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Honestly, yeah. poster frame. Me too. Wall, one Love of my that favorite film. Films, Love most, that film. Uh, can I say it's one of the most highly underrated films of all time? I mean, it's. It, it, I, I want everyone to see it. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it is so it's good. It's just so wonderful on so many levels. Um, so is that Don McKellar in the film? He's on the other side of the street. He's. I mean, he's undercutting them quite a bit. He is. Yeah. <laughs> like by fifty percent. Yes, that's right. <laughs> But then we find out why. Right. And yes. he's told very directly yeah, in communication yeah. what he's doing wrong, as opposed to just snickering in the corner yeah. about him. Maria has the nerve to tell him what's yeah. wrong. Yeah. And I think if you were going to take that um, microcosm of a relationship, if you actually take that and go, I'm having a little problem with um, this company, if I could actually talk to them, if they could listen to me, right. they would actually hear me, right, right, um, right. That, they f that they admit their mistake and feel rightful remorse, and then we can move on. Sure, yeah. Um, there isn't, we're never going to be in a society where there isn't conflict. Yeah. We can't help it. It's how we resolve the conflict. Like, I have, a, I have a kid, and one of the things I say when he fights with his cousins is, I look at them because they're old enough now, I go, you guys figure that out, find harmony. Right, That's right. your job. Come up with a solution. Find yeah, harmony sure. amongst yourselves. And, and I'm always like, when they're in disharmony, I go, does that feel good? Yeah. That doesn't feel good. You yeah. hate him right now. Does, who's it, who are you punishing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, it, 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 uh, so Don's character really came out of, like, I wanted to have... In a in a sort of in a in a in the common narrative that we see on, in media, uh, we would have a uh, person of color being othered, and the majority group going that person of color is doing it wrong. So I flipped it, right. where I have all the Chinese ladies looking at the white guy going, he's doing it wrong. Yes. And Maria understanding what if his point of view is the same thing. Right. So, so, uh, and then to find out that he has a deeper, richer conflict that he's going through that parallels Maria, that's life, man. We all are looking for a piece of shade. And yeah, we're all good. trying to find so happiness. Good. Yeah, I, I mean, it's one of the things actually when you, from an acting perspective, even the most evil villain does not think they're being bad. Mm. He's trying to find happiness. And I think deep down there is, when we're born as babies, we're just trying to find safety. Well, I think this is what's kind of so hard to watch the family dynamic, 
because really isn't that what it's about in the film, in the story? And it's mm -hmm. so. I mean, and, and again, what is this film about? It's about trust and family and betrayal and mm -hmm. and, and finding oneself. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so many things we could talk about, which is so 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 <laughs> lovely. Oh, I have to ask: Is it really a coming of age film for people who are in their middle age? I think so. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, and you know, aren't we all kind of coming of age? Constantly. The, hey, there you go. Constantly. That's exactly. Every right. morning I wake yeah. up and I'm coming of age. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's so true. We think of it as uh, some sort of teenage puberty-like kind of experience. Yeah, and we and we think growth is. Uh, oh, I've, I'm there now. I'm there now. Yeah. I've You're been, never yeah, there. Yeah. I got the job. I've got the house and yeah. so on, and now I can kind of. Coast. I mean, I think there's something. About, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I was going to say rest. You have right. to rest. Right. But coast maybe is the, the <laughs> sort of the more the, what we want to stay away from. Right. Um, um, so the, yeah, it, it, aren't they all just trying to get there in some way, like trying to trying to find that yeah. contentment or that happiness, as you say, yeah, in their right. own way. Yeah, because well, one of the big I think the the big theme and one of the underlying things, and I wrote about it in my lighting notes to the team, which is <laughs> that's the, pretty cool. Yeah, it's this idea that um, the motor coil. Mm. Which we don't talk about. Oh, death we pretend is, death we, comes up in a, a big. Bag, oh, in my film it does between the eyes. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. But I think in life we don't. Mm -hmm. I think we pretend. Like I don't understand why I would be mean to someone knowing they were going to die someday. Right. Knowing that they struggle with that and the existential angst of their purpose here. One one direction we can go, and it's not good news. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. so good. He's so good in that, oh, in that just, yeah, no, performance. The, yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, the uh, so the estab so I have to ask too the establishing shot in the film with the uh, the underwear and the clothesline. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just it's yeah totally intentional. Yes, oh, of course. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> just, I it's, uh, it's written it into the script. To, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the beige of the beige of their uh, the their, color. Yeah, yeah. The beige of their underwear reveals the state of their relationship, mm. I think is what's written in the script. Mm. And it was really quite funny wow. because we had a little gaff that day where they didn't buy me enough underwear. <laughs> and they didn't, they had like one piece of, I was like, who hangs out one okay, piece on, of man. underwear? I thought this was going to be a meaningful conversation. <laughs> now, we're, now we're talking about underwear? Yeah, yeah we're talking yeah, about underwear. Yeah. Uh, but it, I, and I, we actually had to wait to get more underwear oh, for me to hysterical. shoot the scene because I was like, I wrote it in the script, you guys didn't bring me enough underwear. So you know what they did? They in my neighborhood where the film was being made, they knocked on people's doors oh, and said, uh, oh, got any underwear? That's and so old. the underwear that's hanging on the line is actually the Italian woman who lives down the street. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> and does she get credited in the film? No. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I want to talk to her She gets my heart. She, right. she gets my heart. I mean, that I was just like, you knocked. I said to, because it, it was a newer set, uh, set des decorating team. And she just was like, I'm so desperate, I'm just going to knock on... Everybody knows we're filming here. Everybody knows you live in the neighborhood. Let's see. And it it's, was the perfect it's, base. It's, well, it's, it's perfect, <laughs> it's you know, perfect. Uh, knowing, knowing what the film is about. What, what is it really, you know, so you're in a, I don't know, a three-minute interview, and you, you're looking for a couple quick sound bites, and somebody on camera says, so what, what is Meditation Park really about for you? Nina? I mean, because for me, it's just so nuanced and layered, right? Because right? it's life. right. Yeah, from what is it about for me? I was so driven to create this character. Hmm. Uh, all I ever want to do is make her come to life. Hmm. And I feel like um, all, the, all the goodness that came to the film, all the, all the cast, all the creative collaborators, yep. they wanted to see her come to life. That was what, to see a hero. Hang on, come to life, you don't mean come to life and I want to create her, but come to life in the film itself, because that's essentially what happens. Yes, right. no, I think create her. Oh, okay. Just okay. to be able to create, we've right. never seen a hero like oh, this. Oh, okay. We've Neat. never Beautiful. seen someone go through this as, yeah. and, and it was, um, I definitely wanted to, from a directing standpoint, I want this very intimate, nuanced story to be given an epic treatment, hmm. that she is, to me, like I'm talking to the composer about music and the sound designer, and I'm like, we have to have moments that are Superman moments, that are Marvel moments, but that are uh, completely grounded in reality. Because I think those those little, for her to confront her husband, for her to um, tell Gabriel, look him in the eye, this guy that she doesn't know, and tell him what he's doing wrong, those are those are her diehard moments when she breaks into you know <laughs> runs jumps out the window and Knowing the bomb goes off in the background yeah yeah yeah, die yeah. Hard. yeah. yeah. Very funny. I wanted to I wanted to create a hero that was um, that 
that looked different than what we see, but that we could anyone could inhabit. Mm. So that if she is a hero and that we feel her journey, that's great. Yes. But then also we may never look at someone again with the same eyes because you don't you don't know what a person is going through. Your assumptions so are assumptions, it's right? It's so true. Mm -hmm. We're so quick to judge. We're so quick to jump to... to are you just reading people? You're like, yeah. oh, I read them. It's like, yeah. no, nah, you didn't read them. Yeah. Actually, the Gabriel character is suffering a loss, and that's why yes. he's being such an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is him grieving, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, th one of the things that really struck me that you bring out so beautifully is the, the care and concern for, for the two of them, the husband and wife, mm -hmm. and yet... We end. Can I say mm -hmm. where yeah. we end up in an affair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a. I think there is. You tell me if I'm wrong on this, but there's a genuine tenderness. Oh yeah. The the, yeah, yeah. the little massage, an yeah. old woman, an old yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like all that lovely yeah. stuff that you mm -hmm. would do. I think after mm -hmm. being married for so many years, yep. and yet we wind up in an affair. We end up in a almost an oppressive relationship in yeah. some respects. That's right. That's kind of crazy to me that those can be two kind of held in well no one what is it Churchill right uh, no one ever oppresses you without your permission hmm. and so that was it was important that everything that all the love that Maria gives and all the love that Bing gives um, that it was real and grounded mm -hmm. because I think like you know what I well, time on I the the character the actor who plays um, Bing, we talked about, first thing he asked me when he landed in Vancouver was, I could play him as a complete asshole. And I said, no. He's I so said, not. I said, you are the most charming man. You are, in fact, having an affair because you're so fucking scared of dying mm. that you are willing to take care of that anxiety outside of the house. Right. If surprises happen, you get tempted, you're weakened, uh, and but the whole time, your love for the family, your desire to bring a better life to your children, that has always been at the forefront of your mind. And that's utterly genuine. It's utterly. This genuine. is not some sort of an excuse. I mean, even though I guess every kid has heard that from their parents in, in some way. Right? right. Right. Yeah. But but the way it comes across is this was this was a huge huge risk came with a great cost. Yes. And yeah. this is this. I, I couldn't help but I mean, one, 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 I have so many favorite lines. But the, the other one, I'm pretty sure he leans over to Sandra's baby, his granddaughter, I guess. Is that right? And says, "Hope your no." Or was oh, it? Oh, it's her. Uh, yeah, Pepe hope, says it. Yeah, May well, your journey be, be more uneventful than, than mine. mine. Yeah, yeah, more uneventful than mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tear to the eye kind of moment. Right. Yeah. And yet, and yet, those events are what brought us here. That's right. Yeah. Right. And made, it, made us who we are. Yeah. There's a Buddhist saying. Uh, um, the challenges that we come by, embrace them, because mm. they did not come easily. Mm. So, and I love that because yeah, it's it, good. it, it, because that's true. <laughs> I think it's true, and it's a lovely way of whether you believe or don't believe it. It's I think it's better to believe it because you at least take your foot forward, expecting expecting goodness, even though you're in a very dark place and something horrible has happened. It's challenging. If you know that, if you believe that there is something to be learned by that challenge, I think that gives you a more positive foot forward. You know, I think it's really interesting. And there, the, in this, the, 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 I'd love to chat with this husband and wife from a, <laughs> from a therapeutic perspective <laughs> and say, so how did you guys get to this place in your love for one another mm -hmm. that where she goes and confronts the young woman and says, will, will you take him back? Yeah. And there was a part of me that thought, Okay, th th this is this is kind of weird that that she would do that, and and uh, but I'm sure that kind of thing does happen. But to be able to get there, to actually be able to say, you know what, he's a better person if you're in his life as well. I mean, right. isn't that also? That I get my life. I get my if, life back yeah. if you're with doing yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. 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 yeah, there is a culture in a cultural conceit in my world, which is men have had concubines. They have had, my grandfather had a mistress uh, that lived, ended up moving in with the family. Wow. Like, okay. So it's just, it's, it's funny. And then when I gave the um, script to Pepe and Ty's agent, Andrew, he was like, ah, oh, man, he's Chinese. And he was like, you just have to scratch the surface in any story and there's infidelity. 
in, in mm. our community. Mm. But I also mm. think like if you look at the statistics, isn't it 50%? Right? I, I don't like, know what the stats are, but yeah. it's probably pretty high. It's pre well, and yeah. again, and then that are you, reported. How, that report, we'll admit. Reported. Yeah. And how do you actually define it? Capital I infidelity, small I? Right, I right, right. Right. You know, there's True. that whole emotional kind of thing right, as right, well, right? Right, 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 right. As some say is worse. It's worse, a physical right. kind of relationship. Right. It's, uh, no, it's so beautifully, it's so beautifully captured. And, and I mean, um, tell, can you tell me a little bit about that, that saving face? There's a certain theme mm -hmm. for me. Every festival, every time I interview Hot Dog, whatever it is, there seems to always be a theme, whether it's doc film or mm -hmm. not for me, after a few, few interviews. Voice and identity, which clearly are themes mm -hmm. in your film. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, talk about existential sort of... Um, <laughs> um, passion and commitment right right but but also just that that uh that sense of um um uh i don't know being found out in front of others right yeah 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 oh, geez, losing I don't face want, i don't want yeah i don't yeah. want i don't want you to really know what's going on yeah, when, yeah. when in fact the irony of, of 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 figuring out who we really are we got to get there yeah got to be and transparent got to be authentic and i think intimacy only comes when we are mm. it i live in an earthquake zone and it surprises, and so I'm. Is that on your is that on your business card? I, I live in the earthquake zone. <laughs> so, yeah. No, but I think it it, it um, because I know if there was an earthquake, we would all come out and be neighborly and help each other. I know that. <laughs> it's so horrible, but it's so true. Right? Yeah. Of but yet we walk by each yeah, other all day yeah, long, yeah. and we don't see uh, each other. We don't yeah. even acknowledge each other. So. Well, we are Don McKellar in a sense. That's right. Right? Yeah. In, in the film. Yeah. yeah. We're going to steal your business. But isn't life more fun to get into it with everybody? I think. I mean, like, it's, that's, I guess maybe it's also my own, um, uh, I, I know my neighbors. I'm very connected to the community I live in, and that's enriched me. I know, for instance, Don, he has felt connected with his neighbors um, when he, when his wife passed, Tracy. And so, that was one of the reasons he wanted mm. to do the movie. Mm. He was just like, oh my God, this mm. is, th my, my Spanish immigrant neighbor who didn't speak English came and made me tea every day and she couldn't speak and she lost her husband and I lost my wife and we would just sit there. And that, that kind of connection, it's like he's able to be, I think if we're able to be vulnerable with each other, yeah. I think it's really funny thinking, that, like, that's why an earthquake would do it, right? Because then we realize we're ultimately vulnerable. Do you know what's interesting? I found, I don't know if it's been your experience, but, and this is probably going to sound, you know, arrogant and condescending, which I've been accused of being before. <laughs> um, but you're in a room, and it's a little tense, and it's a little off, and there's, there's clearly, people are being vulnerable. Maybe it's a party or whatever. Mm -hmm. Somebody swears, or somebody um, um, says something really vulnerable, or really, you know, puts their brokenness out on the mm -hmm, table, wears mm -hmm. their heart on their sleeve in a mm -hmm, way that's mm -hmm. really intimate. And mm -hmm. it, it can, I don't know that it always has, but it, it, it does, it breaks the barriers down. Yeah. Certainly one-on-one right. -on -one with people that you meet for the first time because they're not expecting it. No, that's right? right. Yeah, yeah. So it can also shut you down, I guess. Right. But, but I'm with you. I yeah. mean, why wouldn't you want to share? Yes. It's no time and place, not always yeah, appropriate. Fair, fair enough. I'm not yeah. going to break down in front of that reporter that is going national with the story, right? <laughs> oh, come on. That'd be a great story. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But, Twitter but, would, would go crazy. But it, there's still, like, I can be human Yes. Yeah. in spite of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it's, I think there was a, I saw a great TED talk, actually, about vulnerability as being a, um, a source of strength. And hmm. I think we don't know that. I think we're told to... It, there's something about don't cry, something about don't yes. show, you know, yes. always be strong. So yeah, no, you know what? Vulnerability can so, so create can I strength. So off, I think it's Maria's character when she says, uh, you know you know what's wrong in your heart. Yeah, yeah. right. So I, I would say you're right, but I, I think that we do know it's, what's wrong. We do know vulnerability is the right way. Yeah. But we ignore it because it's just, it's too hard or it's uncomfy or, or and it's, it's kind of like that, that, that funeral thing. What do you say to somebody? Whose whose uh, partner, wife, husband, children have just died, or Pat yeah. even, yeah. you know? How about right. I'm sorry, and I don't know what to say, but yeah, what can I help? What can I do? Can right. I phone you? Can I drop off a meal? Do you need a hug or, yeah. or whatever? Yeah, you know. I think, I think all of the above. Yeah, like yeah, I think same. just saying, just saying, I'm here, I'm just here. Yeah, you yeah. know. I'm, no, I really don't I'm need. Uh, yeah, I'm available. I'm available. I always say, go slow. When it, when nice. anybody goes through a transition, how about you know? And that's another for me. Your film back to back to Meditation Park. I mean, mm -hmm. how beautiful it is it that in med in, in Meditation Park it seems to me we need to be listening, right? Yeah, 
and, and, and then in the marriage, how, where, did, did they stop listening really to one another at some point? They clearly love each other, there's mm -hmm. no question there, mm -hmm. but um, you know, listening to our neighbors, to the people on the street, to the TV reporter mm -hmm. that you don't want to break down in front of and mm -hmm, so on mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm, forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think this, it's not, it's, did they stop listening to each other? Did they stop listening to themselves? Right, right, right. There's something about the noise of raising a family and becoming becoming phrase. adults, right? Yeah. That you just don't it's like give me a moment of silence. And so I wonder in I want you know, I, I I'm of a very different generation, but I wonder if Bing would have turned to his wife and said, I'm fucking scared about dying. Mm -hmm. I don't want any of this mm -hmm. to end. Mm -hmm. Conversations I've had with my partner, mm -hmm. I don't feel the need to go uh, and step out. Right. Right. Because I can share that vulnerability right. with my partner. Right. Right. In that, in their generation, in that society, that was not something you did. A right. man was the immigrant man who took his family and said, "I will provide and take care of you." Sure, sure. And loved the role. Right. Until right. he starts facing his own demise. Right. Maybe he realizes that he can't run as fast as he used to. You know, right. all that, all that starts to seep in, and yet you're not allowed to express it. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that, I think that might have been like not only. I don't know if they stopped listening to each other so much as they didn't listen to themselves. And that's really important at the coming of age yes, as we get yes, older. Yes. It's not, it doesn't stop. It's just yes. like, do I really want to do the thing I've been doing for nine, for the last nine years? Maybe not. We should feel like we have the freedom to choose. It just takes courage sometimes. Um, I kind of feel like there could be uh, a sequel. I know that's what you're, you're the third, third person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Based on, I mean, the way it ends, right? Yeah. With the music and the yeah, lights yeah, yeah. And, and so on. Yeah. Uh, without giving it away. Yeah. Uh, probably not a sequel in mind. Not a no, sequel. No, I don't no, think so. No. I mean, I did joke with the Popoas going, "You guys need your own TV show, except for your Encyclopedia Browns in your neighborhood. You guys." are solving all the crimes that are happening, all the altercations in the neighborhood. But I, I think Maria, I think we are the sequel to Maria. Mm, nice. Our lives, how we take, so how good. we watch the movie so and take it forward. How come you're not teaching a university course? <laughs> the hell are you doing making movies? <laughs> Maybe you should do both. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think it's course, funny. A course on existentialism, I think. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I really, like, part of the film is structured, um, the, the the directing hand in it is is I want the audience to be very culpable in the experience. So mm, it's not mm. but um bump jokes off the top. Right. It's we first it's very get, funny too. There's some, it is yeah. yeah. And, but but we're there with her. We're in the room in the quiet. We're 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 looking at her from the thong's point of view. Right. Where there's right. it's very deliberate that we inhabit the character. We're culpable in creating the experience yes. of the film. Yes. And that we're l listening to each other titter in the audience, yeah. right? And to build to the big laughs, yeah. to build to the bigger moments. And so it, it completely makes sense that yeah. you take, you become Maria and you yeah. take that yeah. on so good. at the end. Well, it isn't this what we have to do, to take, take other people's perspective, see the world through another lens, another, yeah. another, another perspective. That's right. Um, it, it's set in the present day, and yeah. yet I feel like we were, it was about 1972. Right. Something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Just based on the furniture, the, yeah, dra yeah, the yeah. drag, the drag that's right, scene, that's right, the yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 I know, and sadly, meaning we have to wrap it up. Um, uh, and I'm paying homage to 70s films in the way she's spying, too. Nice, um, yes, of because course. Because there's a yes. thing. Immigrants often, when they get to the new country, they stop at whatever age mm, they got. Mm. They only listen to the music from mm. the time they landed. Right. Their, right. their oh, moral okay. values have not grown. Okay. Like, like a Chinese family in Hong Kong yeah. would have continued to progress into the right. social media world. Right. 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 right, right, right. But a family who's immigrating brings that package and holds on to it dearly. Right. And so you get right. stuck in time. Stuck in time, past memory, all mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Did Sandra O say to her mom, in, in the film, um, uh, uh, something, <laughs> she's so funny, mm -hmm. uh, something like, uh, I got four hours of sleep last night. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I mean, my, yeah. my Elizabeth, my wife, would, would would appreciate that way more than me. <laughs> right. But I still, as a dad, I get it. Yeah, well. yeah. It's just so funny. Yeah, it's and just, it's so subtle. She's like, yeah, I'm totally so good. Subtle. She's well, it's actually, good. I think I wrote in the script, um, I got four hours of sleep, I'm good. And then the stage direction is, she's so not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> and that's all I need. What to a do. delightful film! Thank you, and what a delightful conversation! I can't wait till we can t t yeah, do, always, do it yeah. again. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, talking here today with Mina Sham about her film, Meditation Park, at the Toronto International Film Festival. Thanks a lot. <laughs>